Hi everybody, welcome to science class. Today's Wednesday and our lesson today is on mountain biomes. Okay, up to this point we've learned about seven land biomes. A mountain biome is a little bit different in that it is a variety of several biomes together. Now the mountains we're going to look at are in colder climate areas like in the northern west Montana area for example. Um, this picture here you see is of some bighorn sheep. They're at the top of a mountain in an alpine tundra biome. Here's a graph or a chart that'll show you how a, a mountain can have several different biomes. Do you see the grasslands at the bottom? And then as you climb up the mountain, kind of midway, you walk through the conifer forest area. As you reach the top, you go through an alpine tundra biome. The climate changes. The grasslands are warmer, but as you climb up, it starts to get cooler. Okay, so here's a question for you. What would the altitude of the tundra be looking at this chart? I'll give you a hint. On the right-hand side, on the y-axis, you'll see the altitude in thousands of meters. Okay, if you said about 3,000 meters, you are correct. Since one meter is equal to 3.28 feet, let's convert our meters to feet. We're going to multiply 3,000 meters times 3.2 feet, and that gives us 9,600 meters. So that is the altitude of this tundra on this chart. So the climate affects what types of plants and animals can survive. And in the alpine tundra, there are only a few animals that can live there most of the year. The other animals like elk and deer and small animals, by September or so, the cold weather and wind force them to go look to lower elevations on the mountain. But there are four I want to show you that stick around. The bighorn sheep, the pika, the mountain goat, and the yellow-bellied marmot. So let's look at the bighorn sheep for a minute. In summer, they eat lots of grass. They still stay high up in the alpine tundra, but in winter, they eat plants that are more woody, like sage and willow and rabbit brush. The little pika on the right-hand side is a tiny little rodent. They live in colonies near the rocky areas, but they also stay up in the alpine tundra year-round, summer, fall, winter, spring. Now the mountain goat is really adapted for a rocky mountain area. In winter, they feed on moss and shrubs and conifers. They are very agile mammals and they move easily on rocky ledges. This also keeps them safe from predators. Our last animal is the yellow-bellied marmot. They live under large rocks and they're funny little critters. They make a very loud, shrill, yiping sound as you're hiking on the trail. Okay, my friends, I am excited to share with you Glacier National Park today. This is where I spend my summers every year. This is up in the northwest area of Montana, and it's really a very unique park. It's unique because it has two biomes due to the continental divide that crosses through the park. You have the alpine tundra, and you also have a coniferous biome, or temperate coniferous forest biome. The photo here on the right is a photo I took uh, last year on the way to Iceberg Lake on the east side of the park. Okay, so something that's probably one of the best things to do in Glacier is to hike. And Glacier is known for its mountains, lakes, streams, they even have over 200 named waterfalls. They have 25 named glaciers and over 745 miles of hiking trails. That is just a lot of fun to me. 
I'm going to show you some of the plants and flowers that you find. On the right hand side is a picture of flowers we uh, were walking through last summer on a hike. Here's some more. You'll see the grassy meadows. There's a small lake in the picture on the left. And of course, lots and lots of beautiful wildflowers. I want to show you one of my favorite flowers. It's called the Indian paintbrush. It has bright red flowers with a long green stem. It looks like an artist's paintbrush that's been dipped in red paint. On the right hand side is a picture of um, a lake when we were hiking in Two Medicine in early June last year. Okay, last summer when we were in Mini Glacier, um, as we were going along the trail, we saw lots and lots of flowers. And as I mentioned, as you start traveling up the mountain, the air becomes thinner and colder. Here's another picture of some flowers. We were hiking through uh, bear grass fields. Now bears use the leaves off this flower in winter to um, make their beds during hibernation time. You'll notice that these flowers on the right, they're about five feet tall and the end of it is a cluster of fluffy white flowers that actually look like a bear paw. That's why they call it bear grass. Okay, here are a few pictures of a hike we were on in Logan Pass. It's more towards the top of Glacier Park, the top of the mountain. On the left, you'll see a mountain goat. He was eating some kind of twigs off this shrub, this conifer shrub. On the right, you'll see all the snow behind Connor. So this was in July, but we were hiking through ice fields, even in the middle of winter. You may find it kind of funny that a glacier lily is growing right next to a field of snow, but in an alpine tundra biome, you'll have chilly days, but it can be nice and sunny out. At night, the temperatures can drop down to 30 to 40 degrees. Now this glacier lily here on the left, there's an interesting fact about it. It only blooms the first or second day after the snow melts. So unless you're hiking on that particular day, you don't get an opportunity to see these beautiful fields of glacier lilies because within a few days they die out and they don't come back till the next year. I mentioned that we were crossing ice fields. You can't see the trail on the left hand side, but, th but um, thank goodness I've done this trail many times so I knew exactly which way to go. On the right, you'll see more of the white flowers called bear grass. Okay, are you all ready to go to Canada? Last summer, we drove two hours into Canada with our travel trailer and we stayed for several days. One of the big highlights of our trip was to hike to Crip Lake. So this hike is very long. It's about 11 miles long five miles in, five miles back. And on the left-hand side, you'll see um, there's Connor and my nephew. They are climbing along the rocky trail there. On the right-hand side, you'll see Connor getting ready to climb an eight-foot steel ladder. This was really an exciting part of our hike. Okay, so along the trail, you reach this point where you have to climb the steel ladder. You see my nephew on the left-hand side picture standing up there waving at me. So my nephew went first, then Connor climbed up, and then finally I did. It was pretty scary. The tunnel was totally dark that we had to climb through. But on the other side, you popped out to this beautiful waterfall. We were so high, literally we could touch the clouds. We finally got to our destination. The picture on the right is Crip Lake. Now this was halfway, so we still had to hike five and a half miles to get back to where we started. Needless to say, uh, my feet were very tired at the end, but we were all very happy that we had had the opportunity to spend 
such a beautiful day in God's beautiful mountain biomes. Okay, my friends, that's the end of our journey. Here's a to-do list for today. Today's Wednesday, so your rainforest assignment is due by this evening, 11 p.m. Make sure you name your file, rainforest assignment, your name, and your student number, and save it as a PDF file. The other thing I'd like for you to do once you close up this video is complete study guide page 105. There's about 10 to 12 questions. Tomorrow morning I'll post the answer key for you to check your work. You do not have to place this in homework drop. I do not have to see it. This is for you. On Thursday, tomorrow is STEM lab. So go have some fun with Mrs. Dwyer and then I'll talk to you again on Friday. I'm gonna post a short video and then you'll take a quiz that'll cover the tropical rainforest biome, four layers of the forest and mountain biomes. And by the way, this quiz is open notes. You can use your book, any notes that you've accumulated, any information from the videos over the past few days on the tropical rainforest or mountain biomes. Okay, my friends, that's it. I will talk to you again with my video on Friday. Take care.